Hey y'all, today I am not at the Hyatt house. I'm in my office and I'm doing some research. I'm trying to track down who actually built the Hyatt house. Now local lore says that Captain Lockwood Hyatt built it and he's the one who haunts it. But um, Lockwood Hyatt did live there, but he bought the house in 1870. The house was almost 100 years old when he bought it. And he wasn't a captain. He was a tenor. So um, I'm going to do a deep dive. Now, my neighbor at the house next door to the Hyatt house, the Myers house, <laughs> loaned me some of his information. So I've got some old photos. I've got some um, dictation about from people who lived there years ago. I've got this old book that came out in 19, uh, 1770s, no, 1976 that's really helpful. I use this as my first source when I start anything about Washington. Um, I also have a um, copy of a dissertation that someone wrote about historic Washington in the 80s. So that's been a good starting place. Um, and then this is really cool. Someone shared with me a family tree of one of the families that lived there that purchased the house in 1835. So I'm going to try to um, go on to Ancestry.com and look at census records. I always find that that is helpful. You can um, figure out for sure who was living there the years that you think they were living there. Um, so... This is not a paid plug, but Ancestry.com is super helpful, not just to find your family, but to find families that lived in your properties. Um, so I'm going to do a deep dive here, find everything I can on the internet, and then tomorrow I'm going to head to the Register of Deeds. A lot of registers are of deeds are online, but... I'm looking for book one, which is a whole lot older than anything that's been digitized. So I'm going to do what I can on the internet. I'm going to look up these families and then I'll go uptown when I need to. Hey everybody, it is a new day and I'm still on an old mission. I am still working to figure out the history of the Hyatt House. So I am at the Beaufort County Courthouse. You see it behind me. I'm gonna go up those stairs and I'm gonna go right behind my head to the Register of Deeds. And that is where every deed for Beaufort County is registered. Whether you bought a house last week or you bought the Hyatt House in 1785. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look for book number one, which is where I think I'm gonna find the first record of it being sold um, when John and Thomas Bonner sold it. So um, here we go. We're going inside. We'll see how they feel about cameras in there. All right, folks, I'm inside. I'm mic'd up and I'm masked up, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, and it kind of feels library-like. So this is the Register of Deeds. As reference, way down there at the bottom, that's book 673. Um, there's 707, so they're still going. And we are going to go all the way to what I think is deed book one. Um, I pulled out the index because I know from previous people's research that James Eastwood bought it. He brought it from the Blunts in 1798. So I'm going to deed book one, page 426. And I happen to know from previous research the deed book one is over here. And um, there's multiple deed books because they've been copied. But this is the one we want, 1798. So we'll see if we find it. Okay, so the index told us to go to book number one. Um, it turns out there's a couple of books number one because the original was so big that when they made it into um, make copies, obviously we're not holding a piece of paper from 1798, um, but this is the one we're looking for. We are going to page 426, and here it is. I'm not going to read it all to you, but it says the first day of October in the year of our Lord, 1,000. 798 between John Gray and Thomas Blunt 
in the county of Beaufort in the state of North Carolina on the one part and James Eastwood in the same county and he bought the land and all the improvements for 400 pounds US dollars were not a thing then um, and then it just goes into describing exactly where it is it's so many feet from the markers um, so many feet from the river which is interesting because the river would change um, and so we close up here it's signed by John Blunt and Thomas Blunt they were brothers and um, so it wasn't actually recorded until December of 1798, even though the agreement was reached in October. But hey, that's kind of like nowadays. It takes a while to close on a house. Um, I'm sure they had to get an appraisal and a, a termite inspection and all that stuff, right? Um, so, all right, so here is where we think it starts. So my next goal is, can I go back and find when John and Thomas got this land? That's the next quest. Um, okay, so in the index, you go to grantees, which is the person that got the book or got the land. And then you've got the grantors, the person that sold the land. So I looked up the blunts and we know that John Gray and Thomas owned it, but we have pages of where they got this land from the state of North Carolina because they, I mean, pages, because they were in charge of dealing out the land in Washington so we don't know and I'm not going to look up every one of these um, to find out when they got that land okay so just for the fun of it I went to when John Gray was given or granted um, land from the state of North Carolina um, in the time period that would have been right so like 1785 and earlier um, and I found all of these but there's just no way to tell because they're referenced things like um, 280 poles to the pines on Bonner's Corner so there's really no way to know when John Gray Blunt and his brother Thomas got it we're assuming that he got it from the state of North Carolina because he got so much land from the state of North Carolina. Um, like I said, just pages of it. Okay, so we didn't have so much luck with John Blunt, but we have where James Eastwood sold it to Thomas Smith, who we happen to know was a captain, in 1801, June of 1801. We're still in deed book one, page 438. And through the magic of YouTube, it's right here. Um, and so what we're seeing here is that on the seventh day of June, in the years of our Lord, 1,801, so 1801, between James Eastwood of North Carolina um, to Thomas Smith and um, it explains a lot of the same things as we saw in the first one it runs with the river the interesting thing is it points out that it the lot runs all the way to first street that would be Main Street today so the land runs all the way back so that lot would have encompassed the whole block so now we're gonna see who did Captain Thomas sell it to? So I think I shared with you that I had some research that someone had done before me. So I know that Samuel Smith, and I'm guessing that he's Captain Thomas Smith's son, um, he was not real good with money, and he has mortgaged the house. So in 1834, We've got Thomas Crawford, who is going to buy the land. He's gonna pay $100 to Samuel, and then he is gonna pay off all of Samuel's debtors. So, um, 
and I'm not even going to try to read all this because it's a lot, but I've, um, I've read a few things and it's, looks like Samuel had a lot of debt. So, um, anyway, so the house is now in the hands of Thomas Crawford. And we know that he is going to sell the house to Robinson. So um, I've already found that book. I'm going to pull it over and show you that. Okay, folks. So a year later, in 1835, um, Thomas Crawford sold it to Joseph Robinson. And um, two things that I think are interesting. One, it was a year later. He bought this house that was basically underwater. It was like a short sale. Um, and he sold it a year later. So I'm thinking that Thomas Crawford was a flipper. Um, but the really interesting thing is it says that it is occupied by Samuel Smith. So he bought it, but he didn't kick Sam out. He let Sam stay there until he sold it. And he sold it for $660. So um, we know he paid Samuel $100, but we, I'm not adding up all those debts. So we don't know what his debt was. So now we know that the house is owned by Joseph Robinson. So we are going to go and find where he sold it to the notorious Lockwood Hyatt. All right, I am back in the index. This would be um, grantees. So this is when Lockwood Hyatt bought land. And check this out. Okay, first of all, there's an Elizabeth. That's his wife. But Lockwood has a whole page and almost a second page. Lockwood bought, and I'm guessing sold, an awful lot of stuff. There's a couple of properties on ta in town that have his name on it. So, um, but we are looking for where he bought it from Robinson. And we know that was in 1870. So here we go, Joseph Robinson, May 12th, 1870. We're going to deed book 35. So we've gone from one to 35, page 250. So I'm gonna go grab that book. All right, folks, so here we are in 1870. The house was 95 years old and Lockwood Hyatt is buying it from Joseph Robinson. Um, it talks about, it's in Washington, bound on the north by first or main street on the east of the lot owned by miss sally havens on the south by water street and on the west by the heirs of the myers family um, and we know that's the myers house so there you go lockwood hyatt is buying it in 1870 so we have hit a dead end. I can't find any record of Hyatt, whether it's Lockwood or Elizabeth, selling any of his property. Um, I looked up Grissom, because his only living heir that outlived him was his daughter Olivia, who married a Grissom, but she's not listed either. So what I'm gonna have to do now is go back to the computer and find the information from me purchasing house and work back. So we started in the beginning, we worked to Lockwood. Now we're gonna see if we can trace it from Casey back to Lockwood. Um, it's somewhere in all these books, but I don't know how to find it. So I think we had a pretty productive day though at the Register of Deeds. I'm gonna do some computer work and then I will be back.